madness. More madness, somehow even more madness in six games of NBA action. That's what we got on the schedule for today, so let's go. Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zachary, back bringing some more daily NBA news. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs for coming back each and every single day. Can't thank you enough, but now let's just take a real quick look at what went down yesterday. I tried recording an initial reaction to this trade, but I just couldn't do it. There was no way I could get my thoughts together. However, one of my first thoughts was disappointment, but not for the reason you might be thinking. I'm more disappointed because this trade pretty much canceled the WWE SmackDown matchup that was going to happen the next time the Clippers played the Rockets. Anyways though, unless you live under a rock, you already know what happened. The Los Angeles Clippers and the Detroit Pistons agreed to a blockbuster trade. A trade that sends Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, Boba Marjanovic, a protected first round draft pick and a 2019 second round draft pick to the Clippers in a exchange for Willie Reed, Bryce Johnson, and Blake Griffin. And since the trade has been official, most people are under the assumption that the Detroit Pistons took a big fat L in this trade, that they gave up way too much to get Blake Griffin. I'm gonna address that in a second. As for the Clippers though, there's almost no one that's saying this was a bad trade for them, and that's because it wasn't. This was an amazing trade for the Los Angeles Clippers, but I am also kind of worried about the direction the Clippers are headed in as a franchise, and I'll explain why on that in a second as well. Back to the Pistons though, owner Tom Gore said this was a move the Pistons made because when you have an opportunity to land a star player like Blake Griffin, you take that opportunity. We are serious about winning and this is a major move to improve our team. Blake Griffin is one of the NBA's elite players and when you have an opportunity to add that kind of talent, you take it. When healthy, Blake Griffin is for sure one of the best players and definitely one of the best big men in the NBA. And combined with Andre Drummond, like that is an extremely scary front court duo. Even Aaron Gordon tweeted out Blake and Dre on the same team is tough. This is technically the best front court in the NBA now that DeMarcus Cousins is out for the season. The only catch here is Blake Griffin has to stay healthy. That's what this all comes down to for the Detroit Pistons, whether or not Blake Griffin can stay healthy. When healthy, there is no doubt that they could use Blake Griffin. Detroit Pistons have never had that guy or we haven't had it at least for a very long time andre drummond does have nights where he is completely dominant on the court but on the offensive end he cannot be the guy for the pistons each and every single game detroit tried to use tobias harris in that role as their go-to guy to get buckets and that resulted in him averaging a career best 18 points per game and i love tobias harris as a player was a phenomenal player wish him nothing but the best wish we didn't have to trade him but he was never going to be the guy for the Pistons. That's just how it is. Blake Griffin, on the other hand, has what it takes to be the guy if he can stay healthy. And on a side note to this whole trade, I'm also looking forward to what it's going to do for Luke Kennard. This opens up a huge door for him to start at the two guard and for this to be his coming out party. If you're a Pistons fan, you know what I mean, Luke Kennard the truth. So I can for sure see why Detroit pulled the trigger on this deal. And as for them giving up too much, look, if you're gonna get a player like Blake Griffin, it's going to come at a price. And the Pistons really just gave up Tobias Harris and a first and a second round pick. That's not too steep of a price to get a talent like Blake Griffin. And also just to clarify, some people are under the impression that the Pistons gave up four for a strong draft picks. No, they only gave up one. And the reason they're confused is because of this tweet. But look, all this tweet means is that if the picks land one through four, then the Pistons get to keep them. If the Pistons get a one through four draft pick this year, they get to keep the pick and the Clippers would get their next pick. And that process will repeat itself until 2021 when it just flat out goes to the Clippers. But this doesn't really matter since there is no way the Pistons get a top four pick in the draft this year. The biggest risk for Detroit, of course, is if this doesn't work out and they're stuck with Blake Griffin since he just signed that massive five year, 160 70 million dollar deal over the summer but if he suffers some type of career altering injury that means the Pistons are just screwed for the next five years and yes that is the big risk they took with this trade on to the Clippers over the summer I was worried for the Clippers when they gave all that money to Blake Griffin because I thought it meant they weren't willing to move on from the team they had had the past few years LA the Lob City experiment has been dead ever since you guys blew that 31 lead to the Rockets in the Western Conference semifinals that didn't stop them from going out to get guys like Milo Ciotisic and Danilo Gallinari signing hands gonna come back to bite them. I was like, come on, LA, it's time to move on. It's time to head in a different direction. And this trade for the Clippers means they have embraced that and they are now willing to move on and head into a different direction, start their rebuilding process, kinda. This is what has me worried 
about the Clippers. It's the way they plan to go about rebuilding. For the Clippers, there were three objectives with this trade. Stay competitive on the floor, get young players and draft picks, and create some payroll flexibility. The organization isn't interested in bottoming out and tanking. Clippers will continue to discuss contract extensions at the right price while engaging teams in trade talks on DeAndre Jordan and Lou Williams. They'll try to do a hard thing in the NBA, rebuild on the fly with young players and picks without gutting the roster. Trying to stay competitive while at the same time rebuilding. Now off the top of my head, I can only think of one team in recent history that has been able to do this, and that is the Boston and Celtics. But in the Boston Celtics case, they got an amazing trade for the Brooklyn Nets where they stole the Nets future, and I don't even think the Celtics expected to be good during the rebuilding process. It just kind of happened. Rebuilding while trying to stay competitive is so scary because it can lead you to the darkest place in the NBA, the place where no team wants to beat mediocrity. This is the fastest path to becoming a mediocre team because while you're trying to stay competitive maybe you're not getting the best draft pick maybe you're always the team that's on the brink of making the playoffs or maybe you do make the playoffs but you can't really trade for anyone you can't sign any big free agents and you're not bad enough to get a great lottery draft pick so you're just stuck there that's what could happen to the clippers if they're not careful when doing this and it's all going to come down to now of really what they do with lou williams and deandre jordan what they get in exchange for those two players this is what really has me tripped up though as not too long after the clippers traded away blake griffin reports came out saying that the Clippers are planning to make a huge run, a serious run at LeBron James. The Clippers believe they can make it onto LeBron James' free agent shortlist come July, and according to league sources, will indeed move DeAndre Jordan and Lou Williams before the trade deadline if they can find workable deals and that help them in that quest. And this reaction to this is what yo somebody needs to tell the clippers that when they see these rumors about lebron james going to la over the summer they mean to play for the lakers how do you say that you're trying to rebuild with young players and draft picks and then come on and say but yes we are also going after lebron james on that note i don't think anyone seriously think lebron james would be caught dead wearing a clippers jersey reports came out over the summer i believe saying that lebron james said he will never play for the Clippers. It's just reports like these though that has me a little bit worried about the future of the Clippers and the direction they're headed in when it comes to their rebuild. Rebuilding takes a long time and often doesn't mean being competitive when you are rebuilding. You have to embrace the tank. I'm curious to see what Blake Griffin's going to say about the Los Angeles Clippers management and more specifically Doc Rivers. Every player that has ever left the Los Angeles Clippers never really has anything positive to say about the management and especially Ashley Doc Rivers, which is why I'm really curious to see what Blake Griffin is going to say. And that's also why former Clipper Matt Barnes went off on Doc Rivers on Instagram after the Blake Griffin trade. So you trade this guy after paying him this much money. When everyone in the organization and everyone who's ever played there knows Doc is the problem. Shake my head, cold game. Make sure you pack your jacket, Blake Griffin. Love, bro. I guess he's upset that Blake Griffin was loyal to the Clippers and then they turn around and traded him. But Matt Barnes, you were the NBA so long, you should know this how these things work. This is a business. And at the end of the day, he is still getting his money that the Clippers paid him. Not like now that he got traded, that contract is void and he's going to go broke. Matter of fact, it's exactly the opposite. As in his contract, Blake Griffin had a trade kicker, where now he makes 15% more each and every single year up until the last year of his contract. So he's actually making more money because because he got traded. And on top of that, this wasn't a move because the Clippers didn't like Blake Griffin and no one was blaming Blake Griffin for the Clippers being where the Clippers are at right now. The Clippers tried to build a championship team around Blake Griffin, it didn't work out and now it's time for them to move on. This is the best thing for the organization and most likely for Blake Griffin. Yo, Keen Noah, I never thought I'd see this name pop up in the news again. I completely forgot about this guy. He's like one of the worst contracts in the NBA at the moment. And it seems like the Knicks are finally ready to try and move on from this contract. Since he and the Knicks coach got into a heated altercation during a Knicks practice. After a heated verbal exchange of practice between Joakim Noah and coach Jeff Hornacek last week, the Knicks are exploring avenues to part with Noah. Since then, both the Knicks and Joakim Noah have agreed it's best if he stays away from the team, so he hasn't been traveling with them on their road trip. He's not going to practice. He's not attending the games. He has no contact with the team right now. And Noah's apparently upset because Jeff Hornacek promised him playing time over the summer, and he hasn't been getting any. But Noah, I mean, come on. Have you ever wondered why you're not getting playing? 
playing time. Have you ever wondered why the Knicks tried to trade you but couldn't give you away if they wanted to? There's only one answer to both of those questions and I know deep down inside you know what that answer is. I know you know it's the same reason that your former teammate Luol Deng is stuck with the Los Angeles Lakers or the Lakers are stuck with Luol Deng. And I myself don't personally want to be the one to break the news to you so I'll let KG do it for me. <laughs> now I'm curious to know what you guys think about all this especially on the Blake Griffin to Detroit trade. What do you think about that? Also how do you feel about the Clippers rebuilding process? Do you think it's a good idea for them to try and stay competitive while they rebuild or should they just commit to the tank? Make your opinions heard down in the comment section below but now let's take a real quick look at the games from last night. Joel Embiid was supposed to play the first back-to-back -back game of his career yesterday but that didn't happen as the Bucks get the 107 to 95 victory over Philly. Still undefeated since the kid firing and Giannis was unbelievable once again. 31 points, 18 rebounds and 6 assists. He's really starting to ramp up his case for MVP and if he can manage to get Milwaukee to like the fourth seed still then I don't know he might just win the award. Even better news for the Bucks though is that Jabari Parker is clear to make a comeback this Friday. That is wonderful news but Jabari please stay healthy this time. It didn't come as easy as the Celtics might have liked but they will live with the results. A 111 to 110 win over Denver even though they blew a 20 point lead at one point in the game. Brad Stevens though likes to credit them blowing that lead to just being exhausted towards the end of the game. I thought we were gassed at the end of the game. We missed some defensive assignments and I thought we missed some good opportunities on offense but they found a way. They found a way thanks to a late Jalen Brown triple as well as Kyrie Irving dropping 27. Hey man uh, I guess bad losses happen and this was a bad loss. The Wolves fell to the Hawks 105 to 100. Jeff Teague couldn't buy a bucket against his former team. 1 of 12 from the field. Now, I would have liked to see Carl Anthony Towns be a bit more aggressive last night as well, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Bazemore with 22 and Schroeder at 18 points and 11 assists for Atlanta. I don't know why, but I get the feeling that Kimba Walker might not be traded. I just don't know who would trade for him right now, especially since MJ said he wants a star in exchange for him. So I guess Oh well, Oladipo led Indy over Charlotte with 25 points and 105 to 96, the final score. The Miami Heat defense does it again. I mean, who needs to score 100 points when you can always just hold the opponents to below 90, 95 to 88. Hassan Whiteside with 25 points and 14 rebounds. It takes a special kind of bad defense to let the Grizzlies score 120 points. The Suns play that special kind of bad defense 120 to 109 the final score Devin Booker didn't lace up for Phoenix last night though and Tyreek Evans led the Grizzlies with 27 off the bench there is all the action from yesterday though hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to smack that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more daily NBA news as well as join the quest 200k hashtag a milli in a year remember to vote for the player of the day but also remember the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day and yesterday that player was Russell Westbrook with his 30 points 14 assists and nine rebounds thank you once again for watching i'll see you all you right back here tomorrow for more nba news but until then i am out of here peace